Welcome back, guys. Now, if you're a casual football fan, even if you are one, you know what NDSU has done at the FCS level. Eight national titles over 10 years, 10 losses over 11 seasons. I'm not a mathematician, but that averages out to just one. Now, when you're that dominant, you need someone to break down the numbers, and that's what our very, our very own Nick Dugan has done then. The eighth national championship Unbelievable. for the North Dakota State Bison. Since the start of the 2011 season, NDSU has made a habit of winning national championships. They say good things come in threes. The Bison have eight titles with three different coaches. Just three losses as a program in their FCS playoff history for a lopsided 36-3 and three mark and three times undefeated national champions. To put the last 10 years of achievement into perspective, the Bison who have competed at the FCS level since just 2004 have two more titles than the next closest school. That would be Georgia Southern with six. While the Bison and their faithful fan base would like to see the program cruise into another FCS semifinal and beyond, the Buccaneers know that nothing is promised because of past success. Saturdays, all that matters. Um, we got to put the work in each day this week and uh, focus on what we need to focus on. But the past, the past, I mean, on every, on each side. So, you know, we just got to focus on what's coming up. And as I tell them all the time, it's not about um, the color of the uniforms or the name on the jersey or the logo on the helmet. It's, you know, who shows up and plays and who plays the best. Well, guys, obviously you just heard how dominant they are, and there's no surprise that, you know, this dome behind me is going to be rocking tomorrow, but we'll get to that in just a second. Now, that doesn't mean the Buccaneers can't come out on top tomorrow and pull off one of the biggest upsets in FCS history, but first we got to break down on how the Bucs are going to do that, and that's all starts in the backfield with number one with Quay Holmes, the Walter Payton Award nominee, I should say finalist at that. He uh, He's absolutely going to be amazing. He's going to be dominant at that. Obviously, you've got Tyler Rydell, you got Will Huzzy, so this team definitely has the weapons and the Bison know this team will be dangerous tomorrow. I, I got to believe that that probably, and, and you just look at their season, they've had a lot of close games. I'm sure they're a confident football team right now because of that. Um, you know, they beat Mercer by three. They, they have some, they have an SEC win, of course. Uh, they've had some other close games that they've won by less than, less than uh, a touchdown. So uh, this will be a, a confident, well-coached football team coming into the Fargo Dome. Well, you just brought up that Fargo Dome, and Kenny brought it up too. It's called Dome Field Advantage, and that's exactly what it is. But this place is going to be rocking tomorrow. I'm actually going to break down on what this place truly means to the Fargo community. Hoping to come into one of the toughest atmospheres, not only in FCS football, but in college football as a whole. He's right. This is a fortress in Fargo. And everyone you talk to talks about what a hostile environment it is, how it gets loud. The Bison faithful are more than boisterous. They're rowdy. At some points, it's been measured that the Fargo Dome can reach 111 decibels. Humans feel vibrations at 116, while the level of a noise at a front row of a rock concert is 120. So obviously, this will be more bang than the Bucks are used to. I have a pretty good outside voice. You know, there's also times I can yell at the quarterback and get his attention to, to do something. Uh, while he's at the line of scrimmage. Um, I, I don't expect that to be the case Saturday. Communication goes is, is a big part of um, what we do as offensive line, but you know, it might might be a little tweak here and there to get the communication because of, obviously of the noise level. The clatter from the crowd won't be the only thing impacting Sanders' squad. The air. I think it's hard to breathe. The air is definitely different. Seems like a lot of the oxygen gets used up before the game's over, so hopefully they got to pump some new oxygen in there. So you're just getting prepared, we know that. So we're going to prepare, hydrate, eat the right things, take care of ourselves, and get ready for it. There is one positive, though. I did see where it's like a high of like five degrees up there today. So I'm, I'm really glad they got a dome. I'm real happy, but you know, I play football on rain, sleet, and snow. 